me now? Yeah, whenever yeah. you're ready. We'll just All right. you around. Okay. Well, breakfast time. Good start to the day. Porridge. And what it is called is you can make it in a rice steamer, which is really simple. You don't need to stir it at all. Here's some potatoes. Better to reach straight, but uh, have a bit of vitamin D. I'm taking pills, but if you put it in porridge, it seems more like a, a supplement than a pill. Um, salt. Put that on there. And that'll be ready in about 20 minutes. Okay, and then uh, exercise. One of the biggest mistakes people make is not exercising enough. I reckon uh, half an hour a day vigorous exercise is absolutely essential. And it's far more valuable than doing an extra half hour of work. Yeah, always running, always running bare feet. Bare feet is much, much better because the thing about what um, hugging your bare feet is that you tend to run on the soles of the feet rather than the heels, so it's less damaging. So I'm 67 and I haven't had any aches, I reckon I've had no injuries at all of any kind. So bare feet is better, even outside if you can. I remember yeah. reading a book called The Storm Before the Storm, about the last hundred years of Roman Republic. It's really wonderful. So after my run, cold shower. Um, not always the easiest in the middle of winter, but uh, you get used to it. Plus always after a run, I wouldn't have a cold shower directly after getting up in the middle of winter. It's just a bit too much. A cold shower is great. A cold shower is very invigorating. I think one of the people don't recognize that you've got to actually expose your body to certain forms of hardship. Exercise is one, of course, because exercise, but cold is another, so extreme cold. It's just very good for you. It, it actually boosts up the, uh, the stress reaction system. People think of stress as being bad, but in fact, it's short-term stresses that are actually very good because they, they boost up your, your um, they raise the level of cortisol in, in the body and that drops it down again. It's unlike chronic stress, which is very bad, it's very good for you. And one of the things we lack in the modern world is this boost of cortisol and stress. So I find it very invigorating. It's very energetic when I've had it. So, not, not very long, just long enough. To... I'm actually a little overweight right now. Why do you weigh yourself every morning? Is it just something to... What do yeah, you just to keep it on Yeah. Because um, the point about putting on weight is people put on like 10 kilos and it's really hard to get off. At the moment I'm about one and a half kilos over where I should be. So I keep an eye on that and I think, okay, I've got to really, really go easy on the, on the sweet stuff and the things I like, like chocolate and... All kinds of things. I find it. I find it difficult to resist that. Mostly, I do it by not having stuff in the house. Actually, that's the best way to control control diet. It's yeah. like having a uh, a shower without any hot water. So you really can't be tempted to go weak. So that's why you like coming to work because of the sweets that we have at work. All the chocolates that come into work. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> that 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 table at work is is really really bad for me. <laughs> I have too much of that. Which I kind of like. Morning drink is wham, hot water and milk. Made with soy milk. Try not to drink caffeine of any kind if I can possibly avoid it. I don't think caffeine is good, it's a, it's a stimulating drug. Now for the uh, first emails of the day. Sitting on a, uh, called a mini ball. Very, very good for the back. I used to have a lot of problems with back pain when I was uh, younger, much younger. And I've sat on this for decades now. Um, since before the franchise started, actually, 30 years ago. And it keeps you... You're, you're, it keeps you active. A situation where a client was complaining about one of our franchisees not providing the um, the report, which is the um, report on a building, and the uh, client was complaining and saying, and, and the actual reality was that she hadn't wanted to pay earlier on. And now she's saying she had wanted to. So I just said, send me the um, send her the invoice and the and the bank details, and you'll get you get your report very quickly. So that's just. Keep acknowledging that. 
got a couple of things on here. Um, this is my interview this morning. I just left it on there so I can I can click into the zoom fairly readily. I like to clear my inbox at all times if I possibly can, starting from the top. This is my anniversary phone calls, which I'm making this week, so I just leave it on my email box so I can remember. This week, for example, there's uh, Tony Lee, who's done 20 years. I spoke to him um, a couple of days ago, which was, which was great. He's still going strong. Doug Walters, I um, spoke to him yesterday. He's just completed 10 years. And there's three more. Uh, Michael Gazzola, 15 years. Peter Devaney, 10 years. Simon Jenkins, 10 years. You know, I was talking with one guy who was just hit 10 years, and he was talking about how he raised his prices every couple of years. He says it's wonderful. He's, he's not making a huge amount of money, but he he um, works, you know, limited hours. He takes his kids to school. He, he just spends time with his family, and he's making a really good living, and he just loves what he's doing. So it's, just, it's very uplifting to hear that kind of thing. Now, the other thing I'll do right now is I will check the... Uh, I'll look at the, any new surveys that have come in, and I do this every day, actually usually more than once a day. What I'm doing is checking on various things. Um, first one is a four star, left a little dirt on the drive, would rather have paid a little more for a better clean up, price was good value for what was done. Now, it's not exactly a complaint because I gave them four stars, but what I will do if I get a four star comment, which is um, a really good one, a great work, but they give them four stars, I'll raise it to five stars because it really is a five star. <laughs> I'm the only one that can change the surveys, I'm the only one that can turn it into a complaint, I'm the only one that can delete a complaint. But I like to do this because it keeps me in touch with what's going on in the business. And, and I read most complaints every day. Now this, this is a comment, it says P, open slash four, down slash P, which means they've done several responses. But the point about it is it's a two star survey. It looks like it's got a four there, but it's also got P's there. So what that indicates to me is that the basic problem was price. And it's not fair that a franchise should get two stars because of price. So I'm going to change that to a price rating and basically wipe out the comment. Because I think that's what the client meant. Yeah, price rating is... is price rating means they the, the client's problem is that it's too expensive, which in our terms is not bad service. Basically, this, these three dollar signs here tell us about pricing. One is, means you're in the bottom third of the people being rejected on price. Two is in the middle. Three is in the top. So that it's not a, it's not a complaint or a negative in any way, except that if you've got a franchisee who's complaining they're not converting very well, and you see a lot of dollars down there, well, you say, well, okay, you know, try moderating your price. On the other hand, if you've got a franchisee who's very busy and you know, knocking back a lot of work, which a lot of them do, and you see a $1 rating in there, you think, well, maybe you should raise your prices a bit. So it's, it's not a negative, it's just a way of a guidance as to, as to how they can improve their business. Okay, here's another complaint. Now, this is a one-star survey. No knowledge of the pool we had, directions all over the place, extremely disappointed and dissatisfied with a complete waste of time for all involved. Have booked another company who came to the day, and we can't recommend it highly enough got them in fabulous condition. The other company charged the same amount, you provide an astonishing service with so much knowledge. Now that's a pretty serious complaint, so I'm going to actually click on the complaint and put poor job in, because obviously that's very unhappy. Now if I was to look at this particular franchisee here, now here's a franchisee, got a 4.4 rating, which is not too bad, just a fraction under the 4.5 plus we think is good. Um, <coughs> and you can look at the server, and there's, there's the actual um, rating there that was the problem. But generally speaking, five star, five, five, five. Efficient and courteous, is doing a great job, many thanks. Now, this one here is, an, is another one star survey, what, extremely bad, never received a quote, and he sent me a bill for someone else. So a different kind of problem. But then again, down here you see five, 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 four. And that's including have recommended him to family and friends. Five, 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 five. So you got somebody who's basically pretty good, but just occasionally runs into some problems. And this is over a period of quite a few months. There's a bit of a problem here. Now what will happen is his franchisor will take this up when they have a discussion. You know what went wrong, how it happened. This is, um, and then try and, and try and figure out what the issue was. Now if there was a problem with the job itself that could be fixed then we'd actually try and get him to go back and see the client. In this particular case, nothing can be done because they've already got somebody else to do it. 
when, when basically we're asking people to get in the minimum 4.5, a four star rating is, is not good. We've changed the actual description to say four is now good but not perfect and five is very good. So we're trying to nudge people to give five star surveys. Good value for money, easier to business with customer focus. I like that one too. I think five stars on that. Another one here. Wouldn't service me due to location. Call center would not fix their mistake or call me back. Um, this is something to do with the location rather than poor service. And it's more of a complaint about the call center. So I'm going to delete that one. Uh, basically not his fault. It wasn't bad service. He just couldn't do it. Something to do with the way that the job was allocated. I'm looking through a very large proportion of the... Of the uh, it gives you a bad impression of what we do, but if I go back to the top here and actually put in all of the ratings for the last two days, what we can actually see is this. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll do it for I'll do it for gyms alone. This is this is just yesterday and, and this morning so far. What we see is out of 247 leads. We've had 21 priced too high, which is fine. That's a bit under 10%. Um, there's only 10 uh, that, are, that are one and two star ratings out of 247. So we're talking about um, about 4%. So that's not that's not too bad, really. Six on ratings three, which is not good either. But great majority is is four, and especially five. 20 on four, 153 on five. So that's around about 65% um, of five star. So, that's basically something that I do fairly regularly. Actually, Catherine in the book made a comment about me um, having nothing personal in the office. That's because I'm not there very often. I usually work from home, which is like five minutes walk. This is just mostly my kids. That's my beautiful wife. That's my Jasmine when she was younger. She's now like 23, so it looks different. A couple of my, that's Esther and Sylvia when they were younger. And the one on the left? That one over there is me when I was about 10 years old in England with my family. That's me, just over there. Looking very proper with a tie, which I don't wear much these days. That's that's from the present from Sylvia. She draws things, which is nice. That's also from Sylvia about her mother. And that's me and my sister when we were very young. I don't know why I put that there, but just otherwise I'd probably lose it. And that's that's another one that's about Aaron from Drawn by Sylvia. And that's my mother. She's dead now, but she was with a, with a violin, which Sylvia now has. So you've got various things there. There's a I Love You, Merry Christmas, like Esther. It's probably about five years old, but I like that one. There's a Father's Day card from Esther. Mostly it seems to be Esther. Uh, this is uh, Aaron, all about my dad. Um, my dad's favourite food is pumpkins. My favourite food is rackable, actually. It's squash. You don't quite... And my colour is black, which is what I normally wear. My favourite memory of my dad is having a barbecue, which is good. Wood-fired barbecue outside, which is nice. My dad's nickname for me is Rotten Kid, which is what I call him. <laughs> He's a principal's award. That's like six years old for Esther, but I just keep these things up there. So we had won a mock election back three years ago in year nine. That's one of my kids, obviously. That's Merry Christmas, Mum and Dad, from Sylvia, Esther and Aaron. So all the pictures on the wall over here. Kids got me that from Ballarat. <coughs> one that robbery under arms. Can you bid undersold there, only 500 bucks? 500 pounds is a lot of money in those pounds. days. Right. This is part of my library collection. This is some of the more serious stuff. This is science. This is business over here to a large extent. This is history, historical fiction. This is science. Have you read every one of these? Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot more too. I've got hundreds of books on my iPad. Margaret Thatcher. That's about Spock, Leonard Nimoy. It's a joke book. British India, about China, all kinds of things. A thousand years of adoring the French, that's quite fun. Well, this is this is a, this is one of my university textbooks. It's about um, it's called East Asia, the great tradition, just about the history of, of China and, and India and to a certain extent Korea. It's it's a beautiful book actually. It's very nicely written. It's quite old now, of course, but I've read a lot more. But that, that's that's great. That's a 
Wonderful book. Lou's cooking the kids their lunch. That's Sylvie's breakfast. Actually. Oh, it's her breakfast, is it? Lunch All right. is already done. Oh, good. All right. Um, this kitchen is unnaturally tidy. <laughs> 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 it's, it's for the film crew. It's not normally the, quite like this. They don't do that. Anybody's going to think you're a, you're a, doing the washing up all the time. Oh, no, no, no. I just don't want the camera to pick it up. <laughs> Actually, it's hard with Lee. She, uh, she tends to fight to do things. You have to sort of sometimes physically pull her away from the sink to stop her washing up or something like that when it's really not fair because she works actually longer hours than I do. So we try and keep it under control, don't we? This rice timber is a wonderful thing. I've never heard anybody making porridge in a rice timber. I just tried it out many, many years ago and it's, it's great. I love porridge for breakfast. I used to like it when I was a kid, but my mother had to keep on stirring the pot. The king do you mind working well? Um, you've really got to focus on, on health and well-being and, and things like diet, exercise, having a good emotional life, just getting enough sleep. People think that, you know, being in business is all about, you know, working ridiculous hours. It's actually more about making sure that your, your mind is in peak condition because, especially in my kind of business, but I think in most too, you know, five minutes of clear thinking can actually be worth more than a day of slog. Girls, it's six minutes. We have an arrangement which works very well. It's like a bet. They have to be ready to go at 10 past. If one was ready to go and another one isn't, the one who isn't has to pay a fine of five bucks to the one who is. So it's <laughs> a kind of like a bet. And that works very, very well. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't do that. They're going to be five or 10 minutes late. But with that, mostly they're on time or within a minute of it. My job is to make sure they all have their breakfast because they skip it if they don't watch it. <laughs> And this one is the lazy one, that's maybe for her. Now this cereal is four and a half, isn't it? No, no, four point zero. That's the that's the that's the bottom level they're allowed to get. Anything below four is not allowed. Three minutes to go. You're yeah, I can eat it. Cutting really. it extremely fine as usual. Who have we got here? This is Esther, yeah. who's sixteen, and Sylvia, who's seventeen. Surprise you know what I do. Maybe tell us something about your dad a bit, maybe. Anything unique that people would have known? He's a tyrant. <laughs> the franchise might agree with you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, some, yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna be popular. He always makes us pay money. If we're late. Which he probably told you about already because yeah. we're out of it. But not pay to me, pay to each other. It's still paying. That's because that's you can, that's because you tend to get billed more than most. It's eight, it's one minute to go, kids. Do kids at school know who your dad are? Who your dad is? Well, I mean, I don't tell them. <laughs> None of my kids would boast like that, which is really good. But the, the word tends to get around, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. You just, I don't tell people, if, you know, I don't need to. They make jokes about, like, people are asking in front of me, like, if the gym... If Jim's mother, the guy who doesn't exist, plus a KFC guy, I don't know if he's a little person. I just don't say anything. It's really funny. <laughs> you only stopped with my dad at all, Matt? No, never. None of my kids would say a thing like that. They would try and keep it hidden. Uh, Alright, it's ten past now. I'm just going to eat this in the car. You, you better, otherwise you're out. <laughs> Hiding, <laughs> hiding in the back corner. He's eating, his cheeks are full. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> is he eating or? No, he's, he's eating air. He's got a bowl of milk now and I don't know what to do with it. They just drink it. <laughs> can, can I go outside? I used an ice cream sandwich. I love ice cream sandwich. Have you seen that ice cream sandwich about the milk? Do you want to throw yeah, it? Yeah, that was so funny. It's funny. Five minutes. Dude, you can't just do that. <laughs> <laughs> so milk is unnatural. Did you see Jeremy with that? Um, I don't know how to say his name. Sorry. Did you see Blank um, do the um, period table developments in the chapel? Are you calling Blank? Because I don't know if I'm going to be saying his name or not. Oh, it's copyright. <laughs> Can you copyright? He did the periodic table in chapel. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. He, I told he, you about he it. He recited it. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, and it was like, and this one girl came up and sung like half of the song. She was like. And then those other girls did it, and then they were 
So how many can you do this week? Me? Yeah. Start from hydrogen. Hydrogen. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> hydrogen, <laughs> helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. That's like all of it. Nitrogen. I can't go much beyond that. Really? Really? So I, think, so I, I am equal intelligent to I think it's sulfur and then fluorine or something like that. No, we deserve to take over the I love it. I love it. I love it. I've got it my, on my favourite cup. Yeah, and you don't even know it. Yeah, you don't even know it, uh, Dad. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the... My hair is oily. Leave it here, darling. Have fun with the um, okay. camera. I'll see you tonight at 4.40. I am not coming I'm not coming home. What? The camera's still going to be here. I don't know. <laughs> Bye-bye! Right, see you later. So my kids are... Actually, they're pretty wonderful. They're, they're great kids. Very... Um, affectionate, nicely behaved. They, they're, uh, they're good savers too, actually. They, they get the pocket money and they actually manage to save most of it which is a very important characteristic for long-term financial health. They're really, really nice kids. Funny thing about it, people talk about having children in terms of, they always look at the economic side, but ignoring the, the biggest factor is really whether you like children or not. And I just, I just adore children, which is why I have 10 of them. But they always think in terms of money and stuff. I started having kids when I was actually mowing lawns and still, still in debt didn't have a house, wife wasn't working, I just wanted kids so we started having them. Time isn't wasted when I'm exercising or even doing housework or driving in the car. I'm listening to some you know, wonderful book. I, but the thing about where we live now is, um, as, I, as I say to the kids, what's the worst thing about the place we live now? It's got no public transport. So we have to drive the kids everywhere all the time. What's the best thing about the place we live now? Well, it's the same thing, because by driving the kids all the time, you get to talk to them in a way that otherwise we wouldn't. And that time spent you know, driving and having family meals and stuff like that is really, really important. It's, it's fun too. So it's not wasted. What? What, what is that? It's so gorgeous. Don't, don't, don't ever put that on the video. It's, it's, it's really weird. Actually, what I'll be doing at the moment mostly is domestic stuff. Tidying up the kitchen, um, making the bed, I haven't already done that, feeding the chickens. I thought I had a bit better now. Get any eggs? Yeah, got six. This is the compost, including um, paper. Or at least some paper, which will compost down okay. As they say, anything that lives can live, can live again. I haven't got a lot of stuff going on here, but just a few um, potatoes and the fruit trees. Lee was up there last night with a screwdriver putting some lights on or something. Oh really? She's far more handy than I am, yeah. She's actually a lot more capable in a, in a practical sense. Well, she runs a, uh, a building business, so you'd think she'd know something about that kind of stuff. She runs the factory infinitely better than I ever did. Actually, she put four stars down, but then you said five, very polite, on time, excellent service. So I'm just going to raise that to a five because obviously that's a very good response. Another one, three stars rating as well. He did not spend much time at all with the customer or leave a written quote. 
That's lack of a quote, actually. That's that's really a, a complaint. Quote not given. If the franchisee has a, you can show a different story, then that's different. It may be because it was unsafe or something, but at the moment it's a complaint. People get upset about about being too, take a too tough line on complaints, so I've, I've deliberately eased up a little bit. Especially for franchisees who've got a generally good record, you know, if you're like 4.5 and above, you're obviously a pretty good operator. If there's a reasonably good story, especially if it's confirmed with the client, we want to take it off. So people aren't treated, especially now that, that having a, a rating below 4.5 4.5 can actually mean you get lower priority for work, so it's, 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 it's incredibly important. It's interesting though, I'm going to be interested to see whether it's made a difference. It's quarter past nine, I've got to, I've got to be at squash at half past. Was building on the lecture Versus coming daily under pressure Working on the plot and the scheme The true stock trademark is at the edge of your dreams I'm talking one, one shot for the kill the Once we've got it on site I think it'll be better People can just play so easily anytime Just walk up there and lunch break and... Yeah I'd like to play table tennis quite a lot That was a good move being the table tennis table there Oh I'll go, I'll play it once a day yeah. Everyone's getting a lot better too which is good. Well, that's actually one of the things I got from one of those business books I was reading. We were just talking about different things for staff. And the table tennis was mentioned. I thought, well, we've got a table tennis table at home that doesn't get used. And it's a small room we don't use too, so why not? Yeah, well, work, you can't expect, in a workplace, you know, eight, <coughs> eight hours, someone to concentrate fully for eight hours. It's not, it's not, a, not a, something that's done anymore. I don't do that at all, actually. I work spasmodically. I kind of, I mean, I'll start early and I'll finish late and I'll do things on Saturday and Sunday afternoon and stuff, but yeah, I don't, I don't work solely all the time. A lot of Scandinavian countries are doing four day work weeks now and the productivity hasn't dropped at all. People waste a lot of time in a day, you know, they might talk, talk, have a coffee, you know what I mean? They, they don't actually do much sometimes. <coughs> yeah, you got to try and judge what a person actually performs. That's, that's the hard part, to know how many hours you spend at your desk isn't, isn't always a good indication. Yeah, there is. I think we have a fairly good sense of how productive people are. So now what do you do now normally? You, do? you go back home and you well, have, a, have, have a shower. shower. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a warm one this time or you have a cold one? I have a warm one. Well, so you're all yourself for a warm one after the exercise. Hi Ben, how's it going? Good morning Jim, good day to yourself. Hi Justin, yeah. oh, how are you? How are you going? Bye. Yeah, I'm trying to take photos of my franchise always. So that's why somebody rings me, I actually see them. Because the trouble is I know most franchise always kind of by reputation or some way, um, but I don't recognize people when I meet them. Because, I mean, obviously the first three are gonna be, they're not gonna get paid anyway. They're not, they're not gonna pay anything anyway. So it's the new ones coming on and see where they asked. I can't think it'd make that much difference. Yeah, I'm sure it would make some difference, but about a, an advertising campaign. In other words, hit an area you're looking at like fencing in Sydney or whatever, and then, and then try a, um, uh, you know, just, just putting out something in um, YouTube. Yeah, I want, I want to try just a local campaign for a certain area. So focus on, like, could use Facebook perhaps. Maybe the gym's one is better. You reckon? The Jim's Empire needs you. With emails, the thing to do is to start from the top and deal with the issue without going over it. A lot of people just they look at it and then they, they think I'll do it later, but then they have to look at it several times. So this is, this is um, a, friend, a, a client saying, asking, um, we've asked them to do a review and they would say it's easier to do a review if there's no minimum words required, at least more, not much less than 30 words. So that's interesting, okay. FMS, FMS is, this here is the, is the, uh, the program that shows me what franchisees are doing and what franchisors are doing and everything else. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been like, you might say 25 years in the making. Tom Murray, okay. So the client withdrew the complaint, so I've just taken it off. Check for a potential new franchisee. 
That comes to me. I have to approve anybody who's got any kind of criminal record. If there's any doubt about it, I would ask the advisory committee. Yeah. I mean, I have been cases where they've appealed it and I said, okay, I'll take it to advisory. But they always end up saying no, actually, anyway, if I'm not happy with it. This is a, a warranty job for a solar install. So I'm just checking how much the, the, the quote is. We have to do it. It was done by a franchisee who's left the system, so we've got to pay for it. So, yeah. Warranty fund is, is paid by a franchisees when they first join. They pay anything from a hundred up to a couple of thousand. It goes into a, a fund which we administer. So if a franchisee leaves and doesn't, and, and there's problems to be fixed up, we'll pay it from the warranty fund. Um, Unless they've done obvious fraud, in which case we'll chase the franchisee as well. But at least the client gets fixed up quickly. And sometimes we'll use the warranty fund for issues like, for example, if a franchisee did a damage to somebody's car they don't know who it was, but it's pretty clear that one of our guys did, we'll pay it from the warranty fund for PR. And occasionally we'll, we'll make a payment to when we think the franchisee is not at fault, but we don't want to penalise them, but you know, it's, it's, we don't want to have bad name with the public. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful fund. It's, it's not a lot per franchisee, but it's actually very, very good for our good name. We, we just fix any problems. Here's a, here's a complaint. A client gives a bad survey, never turned up. He said, we're no phone call to see you can't make it. So he's got a, a screenshot proving that he actually called twice and sent texts. That's absolutely fair enough to um, take the complaint off. Now this, is a guy, this is a guy with a, a 4.9 star rating, an excellent franchisee and he gets, a, he gets a, a survey from a client who said they never contacted him. Two phone calls, two SMSs. I mean, I mean goodness, how they can ignore all that. He's an amazing record. Congratulations. Exclamation mark. So I delete it. I let the franchisee know that I'm, I've done it and that I'm proud of him, obviously, because he, he was the one who asked for it. But this is, this is a fantastic guy, 4.9. Uh, my goodness, it's, it's, all, it's really incredible to get so good. This is, this, is a, this is a franchise that's been breached. A breach, what happens is if a franchisee gets six complaints within six months, at least 6% of total leads, they get a warning letter, which mostly gets them a bit nervous and they, but if they, and they, and they do better. But if, if the next, within the next six months they get another six complaints, at least 6% of total leads, then um, they get a breach notice. And when they get the breach notice, it means they don't, get any work until I've done a training course, which is a half day course, cost them up to 250 bucks. And then um, every complaint is sent to me. This is a reminder of something I've got to, got to, got to, got to, got to go and um, talk about. This is the reminder of the business brain interview that I'm doing now and just how to make contact with them. So at 11.30? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the anniversary phone call. So everything's been cleared out from the top down, no hesitation, no going back. Join audio conference by computer. Yes, hello. Uh, ben. I'm good, Ben, how are you? Yeah, yeah, you're welcome, yeah, pleasure. No, 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 Jim, Jim. The only people who call me David are very elderly relatives. <laughs> it's, it's the way you do it, and it's so many small details. It's, it's focusing on, on the little things, the microscopic improvement. You know, when you're mowing a lawn, how can I, how can I show up a half second going around a tree? That kind of question, and you just keep on asking. When I was mowing lawns, I used to, I used to have a, I invented a word called a zootle, which is a way of describing a way of navigating amongst suburban streets. Yeah, yeah, a, a zootle is a way, like a, a, a full left zootle, means you go to the end of the street, you turn left, you turn right to the end of that street, and then you turn right again. Oh my goodness, if I knew what I know 30 years ago, it would take me half the time less to get back here. I mean, just things like, um, like, like the complaint system, survey systems, a lot of the stuff we do now is dependent on very high level IT, but we could have done it a lot earlier. Um, there's, I put money into different things that didn't work, like a trading, trading exchange at one stage, which is kind of linked. I've just done, um, it took me, it just takes, I don't know, I, I think I'm pretty stupid sometimes, I just, I just don't, there's so many things that, that are obvious when you do them that you think, why didn't I do this two years ago? Or why didn't I recognise this was a blind alley? Or you know, I'm, I'm the thickest guy on the planet. Sometimes I just, I just, you always want to do better. That's all. And and I wish I was. Yeah, I don't know. I wish I was more hardworking. I'm a lazy sod too, so it doesn't make things very easy for me. 
I really, really enjoy being outside, which is why I was a gardening contractor for so many years. Um, I also play squash. I like to keep fit. Um, and I go out with my family. I love spending time with my kids. I really, really enjoy my family, my children. Um, I chase my son around the living room couch. Um, I play too many computer games. <laughs> Try not to do too much of that. <laughs> I don't have any talents at all. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm, very, I'm very creative. I'm very unorthodox. Put that one down. All right, good on you, Ben. See you. That came across quite naturally. That's great. That's good. Oh, this is this is battery powered mowers. This is this is fantastic. This is this is new technology, and we see this as potentially part of the future. In fact, we're getting a um, a trailer specially made, which will actually be able to charge batteries as they drive around, either directly off the engine or through a solar panel. And um, there's so many advantages to battery powered mowers because they're they're more durable for a start. Um, you can tip them on the edge any way you like. You can start them so easily, you just have to press a button and it starts to turn. Um, and the they're power quieter. Power, power is very comparable. Um, the, the problem is always battery life. But that's why the, the, the charges you go thing, we're going to have a demonstration trailer made, the, the charge you go thing is fantastic. I can see eventually most of our franchises will use this. I've been using it on my farm actually, I, I use the, this kind of equipment. It's, it's, it's fantastic, it's so quiet and it's so easy to use. You're going over a gravel driveway, you just, you just stop, stop the thing from going. You don't have to pull it. It's reliable, no cleaning of air filters. Funny today, Jim. Yeah, lots of, uh, lots of good marine leads actually coming through, which is great. Um, how are we going with the admin person? Uh, good, I've got uh, two interviews at 1.30 and 2 o'clock. With who? Call centre. Oh, good, all right. Yeah, okay. coming out of there. <laughs> That'd be brilliant, actually. Denise is, Denise is fantastic. She's doing a great yeah, job. Right. She's so, so much of one, improvement. Be, yeah, great. Yeah, well, he's... Very good. So I think it's it's well worth your meeting him. And um, if you want Archie to pop in as well, like Arsenal, yes. well worth it. Make it yeah. Ranger, 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 well, you've, um, Craig's meeting in two weeks, call. so this one, the guy looks good. Yeah. Okay, all right, get him in as soon as yeah. possible. So I don't have a couple of other mowing runs, 15 months. Okay, when you, um, when you have somebody coming in for training, you know you can eat with them as often as you like. Yeah, it's, it's the, the meals are... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Meals are allowed, lunch, dinner, whatever you want. You can yeah. just eat with them because they want you to maintain that relationship as much yeah, as possible. That's good. I'm, I'm very pleased so far. You've, uh, Thank you, Jim. I don't normally talk to Sylvia, do I? You never talk to me. I never you talk to you. You walk past, you go in, completely walk past me, and you're you always don't talk to, to John. That's okay. You can always hear me when you come in, so I think that's. So how many that I'm being productive. <laughs> I just want to see you working, that's, that's all. It, that's if not, I'll take the whip out and bah! We don't get too many issues, actually. Yeah, no, no, we... Um, if, a, if a franchise has a problem with you, you know, I'll come down with my phone in my hand and say, what's going on? And then I ask you, who's on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> um, One thing we've got to make sure that we do is compare apples with apples in this. It's like what we did with the public risk last yeah. year. Yeah, where you know they could cover for mowing but they're not covered if they clean somebody's gutters for example so we've got to make quite clear that when we're comparing it's comparable we're disappointed that with our brand and our name and what we can offer that we're, we're getting so little business from non gyms people from non gyms yeah i know we're getting a bit from the gyms plus people now but, yeah. but we need to go well beyond that so we focused our sprint on the growth report we did work on the gym wipe integration into FM. this is the building done in august no, no, no this is sales conversion so in quite Number of sign ups versus. Oh, sign ups. Yeah. Mm. Responsibilities, different people do different things. Find out what's best, do some things in house, other things franchisors can do, whatever. Oh, that's what we've done. Now we know how much you love to cancel, Jim. I just want to get this one into you. He's gone, to, Nicholas Walton's gone, Jim, what is your opinion on council rates going up despite house prices falling? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know which council you're talking about. If the council does their job well, I think that they probably deserve to get paid. But uh, and, and I want to say, I have a, I have a, I have a lot of angst about our local council. But I know that there are councils in Melbourne and, and rest who are fantastic, and they've, they've got a lot of really great people who look after local residents. But and, not this one. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's a matter of whether you do your job well. If you're doing your job well and you and you you maintain the roads and you're looking after local facilities, you deserve to get paid for it. But if you're sitting back doing stuff all, <laughs> except running left-wing greeny campaigns for against 
toxic masculinity, and that thinks you as your total obligation. I think any any rates at all are too much. Yeah, but that's that's my. I actually yeah. I thank thank those who actually approached the local council for me, um, <laughs> complaining they wouldn't let us put our gym up and some useless functionary from the council got up and actually tried to pretend that it was us that wouldn't the, the big problem as i said before is the fact that we have to take some trees out for the fire but they say oh that's that's against green conservation and so they wouldn't make a decision and they actually she had actually had the cheek to say that you want to retain the trees and i said no i don't we planted a thousand trees i don't mind reducing taking three trees away to reduce the fire risk it's you guys that are doing this not me Oh, it made me so mad. So the council did. I started really yelling at her. Actually, she said, "You got to keep on yelling. I'll hang up." <laughs> <laughs> so the harassment from people to the council did work. They did do a couple of big comments. Well, it didn't work. Actually, she just rang up and seemed to think she'd solved the whole problem for me by just simply saying, "Oh, it's all your fault." Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did make it out to be it's like our fault, but as you said, you got pretty animated with her. And... Oh, jeepers, creepers! <laughs> Some people I hate this council. You just, you just talk about Yarra Rangers Shire and the, and the, the venom, the hatred. I have never known any. Any level of government, federal, anything that's ever had the same level of hatred as our local Yarra Rangers Council. <laughs> oh, they're horrible. Handyman love working for Yarra Rangers Council. <laughs> they, don't, they don't endorse these don't comments. Don't endorse these comments. <laughs> 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 like this video if you want to problem with your council. Easy, or give them a shout out to The whole platform's great. You, I can't think of another company that's got a, a CEO that would actually do this every week. So, no, I think it's great. Well, I think it's quite fun. I, I must say, I, I much prefer the non-business questions, but you don't get too many of them. But still, <laughs> thinking about science or history or politics is, is fun. And being able to vent at my local council is a good revenge on what they've done to me. That's, that's, yeah. that's yeah. might have an impact on my leads. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if they lose all their work, you know what? You know what? <laughs> Uh, we made it clear that but that's one reason I'd never be a politician because I'm always I'm always going to say what I think about whatever it is and, and politicians have to have to guard their language so um, I, I think it, it's, it's fun it's not too bad it, it does tend to go on a bit long I'd like to Live it to an hour. But well, I went on because the questions kept coming through and the engagement was still great. So Jack's going to be keep it going as long as we keep the. You yeah, want to keep no, going? No, you, no, keep going. You, always want, you always want me to keep on going. Yeah. I, mean, I just think yeah, who, yeah. Wants to, who wants to who wants to watch me for more than an hour? Well, I people do. I don't know, know but when you when you started people. going into the council, I think yeah. I yeah. kept watching. You get <laughs> the numbers of people at council. People get on Jim's going after the council. That's what they're doing. Oh dear. I know Tony Gow has a date night, and he told me that instead of the date night, sometimes he watches this. It's been very That's useful actually because um, a lot of people have, have, have noticed seeing it and they've actually they've come to training because of it. So yeah. it just gets it around. I, I like being able to speak directly with people as possible. It was great at conference because I could actually um, I could actually speak directly to so many do. franchisors. Watches every week. Where's something Papua New Guinea watching? So Papua New Guinea. Guinea. Papua New Guinea. He watches every week and he's just putting out most informative one I've watched. That's good. Yeah. Ah. It was we've a had, good one. We've had Cyprus. We've had Papua New Guinea. We've had Fiji. I wonder what else like countries we're going to have. Oceania. Yeah, we're doing all of Oceania, but we've had um, Cyprus, which has been as far as we've got. Canada, what have watch from Canada? We had Matt, Matt Bagley, who tuned in from Canada. That's right. But it's good access for Jim, and we had lots of good questions tonight, actually. They'll be different ones. Which yeah. is well, I, think, I think the whole social media thing is, is, is a fantastic thing, and it's a credit to you for setting it up. Um, I, I'm sure we're going to need to do more of that. And the videos and stuff are going to be great. The more content we have, get people coming onto our, our web pages and, and mm. you know, Spending time on our web pages by reading this stuff and that, that, that jumps it up in the search engines. Yeah, so that's when hopefully the Ask Jim 120 question encyclopedia when we get that up by the end of the week, that's going to help. And those, those videos stay on page, so they have to stay on the site to watch the video. They don't get taken out to YouTube, so we get the benefit you know, from mm -hmm. the SEO, from the ping. If they can stay on there and watch five minutes worth of videos, it's awesome. Mm. on that page. So we have Google Analytics on that page to see how much people spend on that. Oh. That was a really good one. The questions were awesome tonight. And um, oh, yeah, it's good. I love that those, those two tricky ones, which were good, because he was that guy was from fencing, actually. I did look him up. He was a fencing guy. It's and an he, extraordinary he, thing to say. What about Adam Powers franchise? So I don't know why. Yes, but I like the question because yeah. I want people to be prepared to ask critical questions. If he's a franchisee, contact me. So the whole point, getting in contact with me, talking about the different ways of doing it. So that's why I like it. The quoting question was good. I'm going to like that as a clip because yeah. we've said about, you know, they all, people think we set the rates. We don't set the rates. No. Yeah. They're local businesses. They use the franchising brand, but, and it's a race and people want a bloody cheapest price online now. It's not the yeah. way, what, the way to go. No. No, there's people quoting a satellite. 
Yeah, it's. I was more worried about. I was more worried about the the air task in the in the park than I am now. I, I, as we, as our service gets better, I think we've got an unbeatable advantage. They just cannot they cannot match what we've got. Australians pay for quality. Yeah. That's a good point, Mark. It's made a bit. It's well, enough of it. Well, enough A lot of Australians like to pay for quality. You know, it's not a race to the bottom all the time for everything. And the security thing too. I just mentioned that. You know, you've got a stranger coming to your yard or even your house. I mean, who are they? Mm. No, that was a good one, Jim. All right, okay. You off to dinner now? Yes, I am. Right. <laughs> well, you don't have to film dinner. Do you want me to come to you to dinner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that you? You saw me. I think you've had enough.